So in today's video to celebrate animation training on YouTube, I decided to cosplay as one of the best trainers on the platform, Aaron Blaze. Uh, except for the goatee, I did try to grow one of this video. I started four months ago and this is as far as I got. I had to get this video out so I couldn't wait for the rest of it to come in. So, so in my video today, I'm going to take the drawing from my last video and I'll show you how I broke it down to procreate dreams and how I'm going to create a cutout puppet that you can then animate within Procreate Dreams. I'll go through how to group things, create a hierarchy, set the anchor points. And then in the next video, I'll show you how to create some simple animations, reusing drawings as well as keyframes. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe and let's get started. So here I'm in Procreate Dreams and this is the drawing that I drew in the last video. I went ahead and brought it into Procreate Dreams and then I decided that I would just redraw everything here because I wanted to break the character up into more uh, parts than I originally intended. And I didn't color it in so we can go through and see what we're looking at. So currently his head is on its own drawing and then the eyes are their own drawing and the mouth is on its own drawing and the toothpick is its own drawing. Then the torso and the necks all one piece because those won't really move much. The body can tilt back and forth a little bit, but that would be about it. Both upper arms are on separate drawings, both bottom arms or forearms are on separate drawings, and then the hands are on separate drawings. And you can see the bottom forearm includes the wrist because the gloved hand is gonna tilt back and forth. The legs are on their own drawing, but I don't have those separated out because I'm not going to do a walk cycle or anything, so the bottom legs won't move. Now I left this uncolored so you can see what this looks like before coloring. It'll give you an idea of how everything overlaps. So you can see this arm is actually behind the torso, and the torso is overlapping the legs. And it's good to extend things beyond a drawing, so when this head moves, that neck will be well beyond the head. So if you get a little awkward movement or really, you know, pull it over, there's still plenty of room left for that neck to be hidden behind the head. So you don't want to just stop where the drawing stops. You want to kind of overlap to give you some room to play with. Now, there are two things you're going to run into that are going to be a problem in Procreate Dreams at the moment, and that's there are no selection tools and there are no shape tools. So I'll start with the shape tools first. This rigging process is based on my Tomb Boom Harmony workflow. So I'll show this in more full detail later, but I just want to mention if I move this arm this way, swing it up, ideally this rounded part would follow along with this part of the shoulder to kind of give it a seamless look. Also, if you raise the forearm, it should kind of rotate around this circle smoothly so you don't really have any breaking up of that joint. But since Procreate Dreams doesn't have shape tools, you can't get a perfect circle there. I drew this circle and I know it's going to be off, but I won't know how much until I start animating that rig and then I can adjust it manually as I go. So ideally we'd be able to create a perfect circle there for the end of this and the end of the forearm and they would kind of match up. So that's a problem you got to keep in mind. The other problem is the selection tool and that's related to coloring. So if I come out of flipbook mode, so I have this lower arm right. Let me go back to flipbook mode, and that's this arm. So if I go to my layers, you can see I have one layer and that's the line art. I want my line art and my color art on separate layers because as I animate this, I may need to duplicate a drawing and then manually adjust some things like how the line of the forearm overlaps the elbow when it's kind of in an up position. So I need my color art on separate layers for that flexibility. Now the problem is I don't currently have selection tools. So if I want to get a perfect selection of this arm, I need to be able to select that layer and then color it on another layer. Problem is I don't have that option here. So I have to manually color this in and do it within the lines. While that isn't a huge deal, it is time consuming compared to being able to select it and then just drag the color picker into it and fill it. So that creates a problem. So I'm gonna to have to manually color all this in. So to do that, I would click on my layers and then I can just hit plus. You see it changes the name when it does that. So know the new layer is always on top, which is not what I want. So I'm gonna hold on that one and bring it up. Now if I turn that off, you can see that's my line work. So then I would just have to manually color this in. I've already created a color palette. So if I click on this, you can see there's my color palette. And you can see that here. Now if you wanna create your own color palette, 
you can hit the plus symbol to create a new palette. And then you add things to it by going to one of these down here. So let me go to classic. I'll change this to an orange. Then if I go back to my color palette, I can just tap on a swatch and it adds it to it. So it's pretty easy to create your color palettes. So I only have about five or six here and I'd probably use a white. So I can delete that color palette by touching these three dots and hitting delete and okay. And then that's it for the color palette. Let me go ahead and add a white in here. So now I'll demonstrate coloring one of these in and then I will jump ahead to once that's done because it's gonna be the same process throughout. So it's pretty basic. So here I've already got my line art on the top and I'll put my color layer down here. I'm not gonna bother renaming these because the drawing will still be named lower arm. And I always know my color art is gonna be on the bottom and my line art's at the top. So I'm using the painting round brush and we'll click on here and choose the green color. And make sure I'm on the bottom layer. Now one option would be to duplicate this line art layer and then you could drag the color to it and fill it in, but you still have the line art on the color layer. So if I need to adjust the line art in a future animation, then I'm still going to go in and like erase the line art. So this just, while time consuming, makes it more flexible and easier down the road. You see, I got that color there, so I want to erase that. So that's manually the process for doing this. Um, I still got my color layer selected, so I'm going to go in here and choose this color and fill in the wrist. And again, you see how the wrist is overlapping the hand. That way, when the hand moves, there's still some wrist behind it. So there's that filled in, and I would just need to do this with everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll be right back. The process will be the same, so you're not missing out on anything. But I don't want to bore you by having you sit through me coloring every one of these. So I'll be right back, and we'll get on with the rest of the tutorial. So this thing I want to talk about is anchor points and how we're going to group this in order to create a puppet style animation rig. So if I go to this arm here, let me find it. I've got these names. So there's my upper arm. If I click on it, you see I get this bounding box and the bounding box is messed up and I've had this problem with Procreate Dreams a lot. Uh, I don't think I have any stray marks and once you have the bounding box, you can adjust it. So that's just an issue to keep in mind. If I touch it and get the bounding box, you can see I have this white circle with the three dots here. If I click on that, I can edit my anchor point. And the anchor point is the spot in which the transform happens to a drawing. So it's gonna rotate from that spot, it's gonna scale from that spot. So this is a little white cross here. If I touch and grab it, I can bring it over and say I want it in the middle of that shoulder joint. And I can click done up here. So now if I tap that bounding box, it has a little quarter circle. And if I grab that, I can rotate. See how that's rotating? Now obviously the problem with this is when it moves, it's not taking the lower arm and the hand with it. So that'll have to be grouped. And the hierarchy would be, if I rotate the upper arm, the forearm and the hand go with it. And then if I rotate the lower arm, the hand will go with it. And then the hand will be 
independent. So it can move without moving the other ones. So to do that, I want to click this button here and drag my pencil up and select those three and hold my finger down and hit group. Now you can have all this group together. So I do have a separate anchor point for my group. So if I unclick this button, I click on my group and touch this again, hit edit anchor. You can see my anchor points over here. So I'm going to drag that here. So now when I want to rotate the entire arm, I rotate the group. Now if I click this button again, I can drag across the low arm and the hand and tap and hold and hit group. So now you can see I have a group within a group. So if I turn this off, see the whole arm is off. So now if I click on this top group, unclick this button, tap here. So you get my bounding box, tap here to get my circle to rotate. Now the whole arm goes with it. Undo that. Now if I tap on this next group, you can see how it's rotating. So I need to set the anchor point for that group. So I'll go up here, edit anchor, bring this over. Click done. And you can see how that's rotating. And then if I open that group, I have the hand, and its bounding box is actually correct. Let's so tap on here, edit anchor, zoom out, bring that anchor over, set it there, hit done. And you can see how that moves. So now that arm is rigged. And again, I can move the entire arm by moving the top level group. I can move the forearm and the hand by moving the second level group. And then I can move the hand independently. So I would need to do the same thing for this arm. So I'm going to click on this button. Highlight all these. Tap and hold. Group. Now I'm going to untap this button. Tap the shoulder, hit edit anchor, and it's already in place because I did that earlier. So now if I open this group, click this button, highlight these two, tap and hold, group, uncheck that button, edit anchor, and it's already in place too. And open that group. Tap on the hand, drag this over, click done. You can see how that moves. So now I'm going to close this group, click and hold, hit rename, and change the name to arm L. Done. And that's the character's left arm. I'm going to tap and hold on this one, rename, underscore, R. So now if I click on that, you see I rotate that arm. So now I want all the head parts to move together. So I've got the head. I went ahead and added eyebrows, toothpick, the mouth, the pupils, the eyes. So I can tap that button, grab all of these, tap and hold, group, turn off this button, tap and hold, hit rename, head. So now if I Tap the head to get the bounding box. I can edit the anchor, bring it over because I want it at the chin where it meets the neck. Hit done. So now if I rotate, you can see the whole head moves with it. But I can still independently change the mouth and the eyes. So now I want to select everything but the legs. Let me grab those and bring those down. 
I'm going to grab everything but the legs. Tap and hold group. I turn that off. Tap on the body to get the bounding box. Change the anchor point. I'm going to place it at the hips. Hit done. Now if I tap here, you see I can rotate. The head's not included for some reason. Turn this on, select everything again. Tap and hold. Group. Turn that off. Set the anchor. Hips. Done. Now you can see, if I rotate them at the hips, which is how you move, everything moves with it. So... This type of grouping allows you to like do one large movement. Say you want to tilt them to the left a little bit. Then you want to drill down into the groups and you want to move one arm a little bit and then you move the forearm and then you move the hand. So you get to layer all these different animations within this character just based on these groups and the anchor points. So I'm going to click on the legs and I'm going to click edit anchor and I'll bring that anchor down about the same place where the upper body was. And then I can highlight everything, tap and hold, hit group. Now I have everything there. And this would depend on where you want to add the anchor point for the entire body. Since it's not a full body, I'd probably just bring it down at the bottom of the frame. Click done. And if I tap on here, I can rotate the whole body. It's going to rotate at that frame. So that's how you would rig an entire character. And again, um, from an animation standpoint, this should give everything you need. So in the next video, I think I want to take this puppet and show some simple animations. I want to talk about timing. And I want to show how you can use the existing drawings to create new drawings without having to redraw everything. And then timing that yourself rather than letting Procreate Dreams determine the motion. Which is the same as setting a keyframe, moving the arm, and then setting another keyframe. So when you do that, you're letting Procreate Dreams handle all the animation. But you can also go in, move an arm, split it, then move that same drawing again, the duplicate drawing. And that way you're controlling the spacing and the timing. And I'll go into some of that in the next one. So hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.